Hi, welcome to this class. We're focusing today on the spine health. So I have my friend uh, Harry here, Harry Skinny. And as you can see, he's full of bones and he has one spine here with 24 vertebrae, including the sacrum, with the discs in between. So we'll be talking about how we can lengthen the spine and, and always have that health within the spine. All right, so how our asana practice will contribute toward a healthy back and not only a healthy back, but we'll then interlink with all the, the arms, the shoulders, the legs, and all the bones of the body, okay? Before we get started, if you want to learn the basics of Iyengar Yoga, I've designed a new course, Foundational Iyengar Yoga. This course is for you if you're a beginner, if you've been practicing for a while and you just want to deepen your understanding, or if you're a teacher and you would like to be more inspired, go back to the basics. So it's a six week course, 18 different classes, and you'll be able to go through at your own pace. You can find more details in the description box below. So just to begin with now, we'll get started. I'm gonna come off this block and I'm gonna use two blocks in front of me. So I'll use this for the arms. So first I'm sitting back on the sitting bones. We're gonna come into forward Virasana. So I wanna anchor my hips back deep in the front groin, descend the ankles, the feet, the shins, and then I will walk my arms forward. So I can bring my hands to the mat. So if you don't have blocks, no problem. You can bring your hands to the mat. But here I wanna get a little bit more length. So I'm pressing the hands into the blocks. I'm sliding the blocks forward as I move the hips back. All right, so I'm feeling those sitting bones. Some of you may not get back that far, but you're moving in that direction. If you are having your hips high, you can take a bolster behind your hips on the heels, lengthening the arms. So here, the spinal column is a bone. So the bone's not gonna be stretching, but what we're lengthening are the muscles on each side. So we have got lots of groups of muscles in the front of the body, in the back of the body, the sides of the body. So here we're creating that extension, breathing. Press the hands down, lengthen the upper arm back into the shoulders so you make space in the space right near the neck and the tops of the shoulders. Lengthening and opening through that armpit area. Looking just down, if you wanna have your head supported, you can bring your head onto a blanket or a block. If you're okay, just lengthen the crown of the head forward a little bit more. So you're extending from the tailbone moving in the opposite direction through the crown of the head. And then take your blocks away. Come up, bring your forearms onto the floor. And now I want you to lift up so you can feel the abdomen lengthening around that thigh or along the thigh and extend forward. So you can feel now the upper back lengthening, feeling a little bit maybe of a curve to the upper back. And then take the hands forward, press all the fingers down, keep the forearms lifted. As you press the fingers down, press into the inner wrist, the outer wrist, index fingers and thumb mounds and lift up, lengthen back through the inner arm. And from the outer arm, press into the little finger side of the hand. Stay there and breathe. So here you're opening through that side armpit chest. You can feel that lengthen right back into the hips. Maintaining the length through the front body. Just breathe as you release the hips as you extend with the arms. So from the side waist through the armpit area. And then you'll come up. Now just have your hands underneath your shoulders. We're gonna come into cat cow. And in this, we're just gonna bring some mobility to the spine. All right, so with the hands underneath the shoulders and the knees right in line with the hips. First, you'll 
exhale, and then you're going to descend your tailbone, round your tailbone, and move your head down at the same time. As you exhale, you can feel the breath moving into the abdomen. Move it toward the spine and let the spine round, back broaden. Use the feet pressing into the floor. Press the hands and get that roundedness of the back. And then reverse that. Coming back to the neutral spine, head is coming back up, tailbone is coming back up. And then as you exhale, drop the spine down toward the floor but keep the arms straight so you're pressing away from the floor, getting that curve to the upper back. Tailbone is lifting up and then exhale. So go slowly so you can start to feel each little vertebrae as you move from that one position to the next. Use your breath, exhale, so as you exhale, the abdomen starts to move down toward the floor. The lower back starts to curve, chest lifts, tailbone lifts, and the head lifts. Two more times on your own. Exhale, releasing the head, releasing the tailbone. Abdomen moving toward the lower back. So the pubic bone and the lower ribs are coming together towards one another. And then inhale. Last time, feel the backs of the thighs lifting up toward the sitting bones, front body lengthening, and the bottom ribs and the pubic bone moving away from one another. And then exhale. Come back one more time with that exhalation. All right, so now you're gonna sit in Sukhasana. So crossing both legs. Here you're going to move forward. So grounding the hips, keep the hips moving down, keep the feet grounded and then lift up and have that same idea where you're lengthening through the front body. So you're not just rounding and shrinking here. So your front ribs and your pubic bone are moving keep maintaining that space there. So not coming in towards one another, but the front ribs are moving away from the pubic bone and then lengthen forward. Come forward any amount that you can. And then just bring the hands onto the floor, forearms onto the floor. Press the fingers down, pull the fingertips back and feel that upper back start to move in, that spinal column moving in as you lift the chest. Take a few breaths there. And then coming down any amount. If you need blocks at this point, you can use the blocks also and lengthen forward again. If you don't need the blocks or you wanna just use the blocks, get that extension and then bring the hands onto the floor. Release your head down. You can also use the block for the head So here, the hips are moving down. You can feel the backs of the thighs lengthening. And you're moving your lower front ribs away from your pubic bone as much as possible. If you're up like this, no problem. You can always take the block and support the head. So depending on your body condition, doing what you can do, okay? All right, so now come up. You're gonna change the crust on the legs. And of course, if you need to sit on something, if you're not able to sit up, if your back is rounding, then you would come onto a block or a blanket, <clears throat> something raised so your lower back <clears throat> is not um, uh, having the pressure. Okay, so coming forward. Coming forward, you're bending from the hips. I'm showing with the block now, so I'm higher. And then walk your hands forward and extend. First, bring the arms down, pull with the hands, pull with the forearm and look forward. Bring that dorsal 
part of the thoracic spine in, right below the shoulder blades, you can feel that. And as you do that, you feel the lower ribs of the front body move away from the pubic bone. I'm gonna take this block away. So if you're using the block, continue to use it. If you don't need the block, of course, just lengthen the arms forward now. If you have any pinching in your shoulders, take your arms wider and support your head if you need to, either a blanket or a block. Feel that back hip, that back thigh, and the lower back. So the sacrum, the band across the lower back, broad and wide. And then come up. All right, so now you're going to come into Gomukhasana. So in Gomukhasana, you can start from Dandasana, so you can see how to do it. Take your right leg, bring it back. So the knee is in the center. All right, you can even bring it a little bit further over, and I'm turning the foot, the bottom foot, so that it's turning onto the front of the foot. And then I'm gonna take the other leg over, release the hip, and then sit. Move the heel so I can sit down with my left hip and bring my feet in towards me as much as I can. If that's not possible, if you can only get to here, that's fine, okay? But if you can take your feet in, Take your, cross your legs like this, then cross your legs. Bring your hands onto your feet and lift up. So here you're going to, again, get that length through the front body from the front ribs away from the pubic bone, and then bring your abdomen along your thigh. So you can feel that if the abdomen starts to come away, lift up again, lengthen, slide the, the trunk along the thigh, and just pause there. I've moved my foot away a little bit because I can see I can sit down more fully if I have that foot out of the way. Still turning under, and now I'm using both feet, pressing both feet into the floor, keeping the hips grounded, and I lengthen over my front leg. So here I'm coming down, and I'm gonna bring my chin onto my knee. You may not get down that far. You can use your blocks as well. You may be up here. So just depending on what your body is capable of doing, keep the hips grounded and maintain that length. You can even bring your forearms onto the floor. You can use the hands on the blocks. Just be there and breathe. Observe what you feel in your hips. Just allow the hips to release and open. So here I'm using a couple blocks just bringing my body weight over that thigh, letting the head, head come down. And then inhale, come up. So I'm gonna move my blocks to the side. I don't need those, but if, you, if you're using blocks, then you'll use them for the second side. All right, so now you're going to straighten your legs, come back to Dandasana, and then take your foot Underneath, doing the second side. So bringing this foot back, but don't bring it too close because you want this hip to be able to move down, all right? And then if the calf is quite muscular or meaty, just turn it turn and turn the foot. You want to have as much as possible, both knees lined over one another. If that's not possible, then of course, this is okay too. You still feel that opening in the hips. All right, so you're coming down, lengthening first, front body extending. Use your fingertips on the floor. You can feel this right hip wants to lift, so press the right hip down. Press both feet down. Lift and lengthen. You can bring your hands closer in and slide the hands to get that contact of the abdomen and the thigh. And then release the head down. And take your hands forward. And here, the back is going to start to round a bit. But still, you want to maintain that length through the front body as long as possible. Stay with your breath. Observe what you feel with that um, 
hip and through the back, through the buttocks, the gluteal. Breathe into it. And then inhale, come up. All right, now come back to Dandasana. Extend your legs out. Just allow the knees to open up. Okay, we'll come back into Gomokasana. So coming to the first side, bend the knee, take the foot over. This time you're gonna come into a twist, all right? So if you need the block behind you, if you're sitting on a block, then take a block behind you. And to bring up your left arm, inhale, exhale, bring the arm over and just press the forearm into that leg and use the hand behind you, be on the fingertips, lift up through both sides. Inhale, lengthen, exhale, turn. So find the center of your spine. From the center of your spine, you're turning that left side from the center over to the side trunk. Take a few breaths there. And then release. Come back to Dandasana, and we'll change sides. So coming back. So this is a spinal twist. This is Parishva Gomokasana. So raise up through the right arm with your hand behind you, already turning. So you can feel the turning in the abdomen, the rib cage, the upper chest. So just allow that breath and that back arm to help you turn. You'll feel the weight on your feet, on your, on your hips. You can feel that turning, but keep this hip down. Inhale, lift up, exhale, turn. So using that arm as a little bit of an anchor and a fulcrum, press the fingers down toward the shin bone. And with that inhale, lift, exhale, turn. Find the middle, the center of the spine again, middle of the back. Sit up tall, exhale, use your breath, turn. So you're broadening the back body, not only lengthening, but you're broadening. So we have little muscles around the spine. As we use those muscles, there's more circulation that comes into the spinal column and into the disc area, which brings nutrition to the body, to the whole spinal column. So twisting is important for spine health and then release. Okay, so now you're going to use a block and we're gonna come closer to the wall. We're gonna go into Barbhajasana. So I'm staying on my hips. Um, I'm bringing this foot back and then this foot over. And you can see here, I'm listing to one side. So if you can sit, you can move your feet a little bit to make room so this hip can descend and untuck that outer hip that gets stuck, you can stay like this. So I'm not exactly perpendicular, but I'm gonna use the wall to bring my spine away from the wall. So I'm not into this wall like this, but I wanna be close enough to the wall that when I bring my fingertips onto the wall, it will help me move into this vertical position, okay? So here, you can have the block behind you in case we need that. All right, so now fingers at the wall, move the hips down. And again, if, you, if you're way over like this and you can't adjust, then sit up on the block, adjust your hips. So now you can see more or less the hips are equal, level, and then you'll bring your fingertips onto the wall. So from the center of the spine, you're widening. Press the knees down, press the feet down, and with the fingertips, press into the wall. Okay, so I've adjusted again. I wanna be on my fingertips. When you press with your fingertips, then you can get a little bit more purchase so that you're moving back. So I, when I do that, I feel the knee, I feel more weight on the foot, and I feel the hips more balanced. Inhale, lift, exhale, turn. So finding the center of the spine again, turning from the waist first, and then going to the middle back, and then going to the upper back. Inhale, lengthen, exhale, turn. Take a few breaths there. Observe your abdomen as you exhale. Remember when we were in the cat-cow position, 
with the different <coughs> up and down, you could feel the abdomen moving. So what do you feel here? Can you feel that a little bit of the pubic bone and the, and the lower ribs moving a little bit towards one another to get that more action through the abdominal area, more turning. All right, and then release. We'll come to the other side. Take your block again if you need that block. <clears throat> Bring your left foot over, your right foot on top. And now I'm going to sit on the floor, move that heel, move that hip down. So you want both knees on the floor. So if I come into this position and I've got my shin bone um, on the arch of the foot, the knee is is lifted. So I'm moving the front of the ankle so that that knee is on the floor. And then I'm going to take the hand at the wall and bring myself into more of an upright position. So here I'm descending from the top of the buttocks down. I keep the knee pressed, both knees moving down. Inhale, lift up. Exhale, turn. So stay with your foundation. Stay with that idea of that vertical spine from the tailbone lengthening up through the crown of the head. And with that, <coughs> separate the back, spread the right back ribs, right back waist. Inhale, lengthen, exhale, turn. As I turn, the chest that's facing the wall, the chest that's closer to the wall, is moving to the right, to the left. Keep the shoulders down, so not lifting the shoulders up. Send the shoulder blades, and then release. Okay, so come back into Dandasana. Bring both legs out. I'm going to turn to the side here. Take this block away so I don't run into it in a second. Okay, so you're going to sit in Dandasana. And from Dandasana, Dandasana, I'm going to first bend my knees and then come down with a little bit of a shortening in the abdominal area. So from the pubic bone to the lower rib cage, you can, I can feel that I'm moving in a little bit. I'm going to take my feet, press my feet into the floor, and then roll and use my hands and lift my hips up. And then I come back to the feet. Walk the hands out, and then use the hands again. Roll on the back. Coming back to the feet, walk the hands forward. So here, I'm still getting that length. Exhale. Bend the knees, and each time you go, you can go a little bit further. If you can take your feet all the way down behind you, you can straighten the legs. So here, we're just bringing a little bit of warmth to the spine as we go back and forth. And now this time, keep the legs straight and start to move the hands toward the feet. And then bring the legs over. You can use the hands here at the hips to help, help you with that momentum going back and forth. Lifting the hips up. Coming forward. And at this time, bring the arms back. See if maybe you don't need the arms to get that momentum. Throw the arms back. Lift the hips up. Come forward. Just do a few more times. So feel the breath. See how the breath helps you. Observe the momentum as you lift the hips. And come back to Dandasana. Okay, so you probably did that when you were about six years old, so <laughs> it's been a while. All right, so now we're going to go into Adho Svanasana. So bringing your hands forward, keep the knees bent. So keeping the thighs on the abdomen like when we were in forward Virasana. Now the knees are facing forward toward the hands. Now lengthen, curve the upper back, look up. Keep the back moving back towards your heels as you straighten the legs. 
As you straighten the legs, tighten the kneecaps, move the knee into the knee socket, and descend the heels. Keep the arms lengthened. Again, come into that bent knee position, looking forward, and then come onto the toes. I'm going to take my feet back a little bit. So getting the right distance, not being too close, you want to have length. You want to have more or less a triangle between your arms and your legs. So as I press with my hands, lift up through the outer arms into the hips. Hips are lifting up from as I press the feet down, lifting up through the legs, lifting up through the hips. And then from here, I'm going to start to bring the heels toward the floor, but actually toward the end of the mat. So not just dropping the hips, but lengthen the heels, lengthen the whole foot as you draw the heels down toward the floor. Stay up your breaths. Observe your lower ribs and your pubic bone. So they're at a neutral position. If they're not at a neutral position, your pubic bone is moving away and your abdomen is dropping. So move your pubic bone up towards your lower ribs. And then walk forward, coming into Uttanasana. Press your fingertips down. Lengthen the side trunk forward as you move your hips back. So you're still lengthening through the spine. From the tailbone right up through the crown of the head. Have that direction as the thighs move back. And then take your fingertips back, lengthen forward again. So the pubic bone to the navel, the whole front body, anterior spine is lengthening. Anterior spine is the front of the spine. Posterior spine is the back of the spine. Release your head down, back of the head moving down. Press the fingers down and let your lower ribs move down. Let your middle ribs move down. Keep your shoulder blades lifting up. And then inhale, step back to downward dog. Bring your right foot forward and step it by your front hand. Turn your back heel. Be on both fingertips, by the fingertips on both hands, Parvottanasana. And then bring both hands over on the outer side of the foot. From here, I want you to lengthen the abdomen forward, but I also want you to turn the whole, slide the whole trunk like a sliding door, so that you're lengthening. Press the hands down, and then slide the trunk to the side. So lengthening, sliding, and then bring your hand onto your hip, coming into Pavrita Trikonasana. Keep grounded through the back heel, extending. Turn the back body, and reach the arm up. Lift up. Take a few breaths there. Continue lengthening. From that heel, lengthen up through the whole body, through the crown, and then exhale, turn. And bring your hand down. Come back in Parvottanasana. Step back into Downward Dog. Take a few breaths there. And then step your left foot forward. At any point, you can stop the, the video, stop the class. Take the props that you need, make the adjustments you need, and then start over. That is the beauty of having this online. So now take both hands over, and I want to get that abdomen, the whole body, over that front thigh. So I'm lengthening first, and then I'm sliding. Lengthen and slide. Now I'm going to start to turn. So this this hip needs to move down, the outer hip needs to move down, so I'm pressing into the back heel, pressing, turning. Look forward just to begin with. From the front foot, drawing back into that hip. I can feel the forearm on that shin bone. I can press into that and turn the back body and then raise the arm up. And then 
come down, both hands on the side of the foot, step back into downward dog. Bend the knees and walk or jump forward. Come to Padangustasana, take hold of the big toes. Press all the mounds of the toes down and pull the big toes up. So you're lengthening from the front body. You can feel the middle part of the body, the middle part of the spine. Absorb that into the body, look forward. Keep both hips moving towards one another and move the front thighs back. Outer hips moving back. And then release the head down. Back of the head down. As you come into this forward bend, you can feel the front ribs and the pubic bone moving towards one another. Stay with the soft breath, soft belly. And then bring your hands onto your hips. Inhale, come up. Okay, we're gonna go down on the floor and we're gonna be working on this action of lifting the chest. So we're lengthening the front spine and we're getting that curve to the upper back. This is the dorsal, the back area of the thoracic. So that's moving in and the chest is lifting. Okay, the way we'll do that, Bhujangasana, we'll lie down on the floor and here your pelvis is on the floor. You need to reach each leg up so that you open that space of the groin. So your hips aren't lifted like this. So extend, press the groin into the floor, both legs. Have the feet pressing down. Now, we'll take the feet a little bit wider just to begin with. Full pose are, is the feet together. So tailbone down, lengthening the lower back. And you're gonna come onto forearms like we did earlier. Press the fingers into the floor, pull the hands back to get that movement of the upper back, that curve of the upper back and lift the chest. From here, you can even feel the length coming from the pubic bone up through the front body, through the abdominal area, and lift up through the chest. Keep the feet pressing down. Keep the arms pressing down, shoulders moving down. And breathe. You can hear it's a little hard to breathe and talk in this position. All right, coming down. <clears throat> you can try taking the feet closer together. See how that is for you. Big toes, heels. And then you're going to take your hands just by the side of the chest. Keep your elbows moving towards you. So I'm pressing my feet. My feet are sliding away a little bit. I'm pressing the hands. Keep the hips on the floor. Elbows moving towards one another. Get that scooping action with the upper back. Breathe, lift the chest. Middle buttocks in, right where the tailbone is. And feel that the hips are compact. So when I say that, this tailbone is moving down and the hips are moving in towards one another. This is your gluteus attached to your leg. So this is quite a, an area that likes to spread. So if you spread that in this back bending action, you can get, you don't have contact with the lower back. So we'll try one more time. So keeping the outer hips moving in, tailbone moving down, top of the buttocks moving down. And then working with the hands, you can take the hands back a little bit further. Keep the elbows bent so that you can keep the Focus and attention on getting that middle part of the back lifted, curving, front spine lengthening. Take a few breaths there. So we have long muscles in the front of the body as well. Here we're extending. And then release. Fold your arms, bring your head onto your forearm. And now you're going to adjust your legs again. So you're opening the front of the groin. Be on the toes or be on the front of the foot. And now I want you to lift the legs up. So as you lift the legs up, because we're on the floor, your 
pinning the tailbone and middle buttocks down. As long as you keep that awareness of the buttocks moving straight down and that firmness on the outer legs, then lift the legs up, okay? Let's do one more time. Bring your head down, press the forearms down. Press down through the feet and lift the kneecaps, tighten the kneecaps so the legs are firm. And then inhale. Just be aware of the buttock. Firming the leg all the way up through the outer hips, moving towards one another. And then inhale, lift up. Lift from the fronts of the thighs. Breathe. And then bring the legs down. Okay, we're gonna do one more time. Before you go into it, I just want to make sure that you lift those front ribs away from the pubic bone. So you have maximum length through the abdominal area. Change the cross on your arms. Have the feet hips width apart. Press the feet and lift the kneecaps up. And as you're pressing the arms down, just let the head stay low and then lift up. Middle buttocks. Outer hips, front thighs lifting, and then come down. Okay, we're going to do that one more time. You're going to bring your head down. Take your arms back, have your palms, just hook your thumbs, and you're going to use your, the hook of your thumbs to help draw your chest up. So press down into the feet, pull your arms back, so getting that length through the front body, stretch through the arms, and then lift the legs up. Inhale, lift. Outer hips moving in, middle buttocks moving down. Breathe. And then come down. Change the cross on the thumbs one more time. Adjust your legs. Be on the center of the front groin. Thigh is facing the floor. Lift your kneecaps up, press into the feet. Roll your shoulders back. And now inhale, lift the chest. Pull the arms back, shoulder blades in, tailbone in, middle buttocks in. Lift the legs. Stay with your breath. And then exhale, come down. Just rest your head on your arms. Take a few breaths there. Come back into Adho Svanasana. Come down, and now sit again, either with a block or just on the floor. Bring your legs into Baddha Konasana. So the soles of the feet together. Take your hands on your, either underneath the feet, on the toes, or underneath the ankles. So see where it's better for you, because I want you to lengthen forward. Maybe under, under the ankles for now. Fingers under the ankles. Pressing the forearm onto the leg, you're going to come down. So as you press the forearm, you're lengthening the inner leg. Outer leg is drawing back. But at the same time, you're not coming down with this shortening of the front ribs and the pubic bone. You're maintaining that as you go forward. And then, of course, finally, you're, you'll come into that more of that cat-cow position where your abdomen is moving back. Your breath is moving back as you exhale, releasing the head down so that you can feel your lower back widening. With your breath, let the whole back widen. Release your head. Keep pressing into the feet, the mounds of the toes and the heels, lengthening the inner legs. Letting the back of the head come down. And then inhale, come up. 
Okay, so now you're going to lay down on your back. And <clears throat> for this next pose, you're going to be um, pretty much one leg's distance away from the wall. So I'm going to just bring my leg over like this. I'm adjusting my hip. And then bring the other leg over. Okay, so that's about the distance I want to go. All right, so this is Jatara Parivartanasana. We're not going to do the full pose, but we're going to use the wall for one leg. All right, so when you come into this, shift your hips just to the side a little bit and bring your legs up. And as you bring your legs up, the bottom leg closest to the wall, you're going to bend that knee. Now you can see that knee is higher than the other knee, so this hip is dropping. We want to move this hip away, so we're going to roll over onto the other hip. As this hip lifts up, and then using the wall to press. So I'm lengthening and extending. All right, now here, I'm caught on my lower shoulder blade and my lower shoulder. So I'm going to press the arm, unhook that side of the trunk, and then bring my arms to the side. Here, the lower waist, turning to the upper waist. So this is a bit of a twist. So you're bringing the foot closer towards you. The knee is bent, and then your lower waist exhale turn. Keep that extension through the lower back. Keep that contact with the foot at the wall as you keep that leg extending. And then release. Coming back to the center. And then because we're going to use the wall again, you're going to roll to the other side. All right, and bring your or your legs up, shift your hips. So instead of feet on the floor and lifting up, just sh lift the legs, shift the hips, bend that knee. So keep both thighs in line with one another and then bring that leg over. I'm gonna use the foot at the wall to move that hip down, but also to connect from the hip into the heel. Adjust the shoulders and then use the exhalation turn. It's just a slight twist. We're not getting too deep into a twist at the end of practice like this, but just something to release the back. All right, now you're going to roll up. And you can have one block. Actually, I could use another block. You can just start like this. All right, so I'm sitting in Paschimottanasana. I'm going to come forward in Dandasana. Now, as I said before, if you require more height for your hips, for your lower back, then sit on some more height. Take the flesh of the buttocks back, so you're right on the backs of the thighs. And then coming into Paschimottanasana, you're going to come forward. You can take your hands on your feet. Just get that length again through the front body thighs descending. So in all of our forward bends, the legs are still working, even though you might rest your head and bring yourself into a quiet state. Your legs are still actively descending to support that length of the back. All right, so now I'm going to adjust this block wherever I need to. And it may change after you're here. And then I'm going to use these blocks to just rest the arms, the elbows on. So if you don't have those, you could use a rolled blanket. You could have a bolster going across the legs. So now already I've releasing a little bit further, so I'm going to move that block and just have that space right between the eyebrows on the edge of the block and the, the skin and the flesh is moving toward my nose. So because we're coming into the quiet phase of the practice now, I want to not agitate my nervous system, so forehead moving down, relaxing the head completely, 
So I'm holding onto the feet, but you don't need to hold tightly. That's why you've got the blocks there. Let your shoulders release. Let your breath soften. And depending on what kind of height you've taken, it may be that you don't need to be as high after you've been there a little bit, and then you can bring the head down. And if that's the case, then you would bring those blocks down as well. I'm holding on the heels now, resting the forearms. And now come back to the breath again and feel that breath as you exhale toward the lower back. Not strong and aggressive, but just relax. Let the lower back, the middle back, and the upper back broaden, as well as lengthen. We'll come up now. So straighten your arms. Take your blocks away. And then you'll lie down for Shavasana. So just coming down, bend your knees, be in the center of the mat, adjust your hips, feel the whole lower back on the floor. Use your feet to press into the floor, and as you exhale, feel that focus on the breath in the abdomen and moving toward the lower back, like you did when you were doing cat-cow. So a little bit, the pubic bone and the front ribs are moving towards one another. So you feel the whole lower back on the floor, You've adjusted the pelvis, and then you can take your hands on the sides of the mat, reach down, lengthen. So you, this upper shoulder gets caught, so release it, let the shoulder blades move down, and then turn the arms completely out, and reach out with the legs. Now, I don't have a blanket here, but if you do need, if your head is lifting, your chin is lifting, Take some support under your head. Have the blanket all the way up to your shoulders. If you don't need that, then you don't need to use the blanket. Just make sure that when you look down at yourself, you're in line. So your legs, your hips, your shoulders are all in line. And then release your legs out to the side. So the little toe side of the foot is moving toward the floor. The inner leg is rolling out from the armpit area. You're Rolling out. I'm just feeling the whole length of the spine from the tailbone right up through the back of the head. So that you could feel that connection. Feel how the legs are connected into the pelvis. Feel how the legs make a difference in the pelvic girdle how the arms make a difference in the shoulder girdle for the health of the spine, for the lengthening, for the turning, the forward bending, and the back bending. So we have access to our spinal column through our limbs, through our arms, and our legs. So when we're practicing, important that we focus on what we can do with our arms, what we can do with our legs, so that they are strong and they can support us in our practice to move from the limbs, move into the different layers as we move inward. Let your breath be relaxed with each breath. Let yourself move inward, letting go of anything that you're holding on to or any thoughts you have about what you need to be doing or what you should have done. Just allow yourself to be here in Shavasana. You can stay as long as you want. You can stay longer. Just allow yourself to be.
Namaste. Thank you for joining me today on this segment on spine health. So just be aware of how you feel after that class and how your spine feels, how you're moving. And just see how that all connects with the different movements that we were in and how you feel, all right? So I didn't put a, a segment here with Shirshasana, headstand and shoulder stand, but you can go to one of the other videos and do one of those segments or find something else on spine health. All right, nice to see you, namaste.